ما علمتنا انك سميع مجيب الدعاء اللهم اني اعوذ بك من علم لا ينفع وقلب لا يخشع ونفس لا تشبع ودعاء لا يسمع ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد اذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمه انك انت الوهاب رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي وارحم ابي بري الحمد لله رب العالمين ام شور شيخ مصطفى كفرت almost if not all and even more what you need to know about the external the outer so what breaks your fast just to make sure everybody is focused what breaks your fast just a second you said eating and drinking wrong yes has to be intentional because if you forget and how many of you have had that I said oh subhanallah I'm fasting absolutely happy to and then don't do anything you continue and you say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fed you so intentionally it has to be intentional eating drinking intimate relationship vomiting, vomiting. yes exactly okay طيب. so let's start bismillah this is the dua that the sahaba the companions used to do six months before ramadan i hope at least we start doing it you all can see the screen yes alhamdulillah so allahumma ballighna bi ramadan qala ma'la ibn fadl كانوا يدعون الله تعالى ستة أشهر أن يبلغهم رمضان ويدعونه ستة أشهر يتقبل منهم. They used to ask Allah six months before Ramadan. So we have three weeks and a few days. Ya Allah, make us live to be, to see Ramadan, even if you are not going to be able to fast. But at least you are in, that, in those blessed days because you can do many other things. And then after you, Ramadan, don't be so sure. Allah is always generous and Allah is always kareem. But I want to make sure Allah ma taqabbal minni. Ya Allah accept from me. Bi-idhnillah. Okay. So what is the name fasting? Why it's called siyam? It's not only food and drink. This is the linguistic meaning. Anything you learn, there is linguistic meaning and there is the Islamic or Sharia meaning. Sama an shay to abstain. What is the famous person who said, I am fasting, but but not from food and drink. I'm sorry? I can't hear you. Raise your hand and answer me. Yes. Sayyidah Maryam, in nadartu lirrahmani sawma falan ukallima al-yawma nsiya. Yes, Ya Hamza, which chapter is this? Surat Maryam. When she said, when she came to her people, carrying Sayyidina Isa, and she said, I have made an oath to Allah, I am fasting. I am not going to talk to anybody. So fasting is to abstain, whether it is from food, uh, some, in general, something. Could be speech. Usually it's used, it's said in the Arabic language for the wind, Samat al When you have a very windy day, and suddenly the wind stops. You said Samat al stopped. And this is actually the original meaning of it. Or Samat al-Shams, when the Shams disappear. And fasting, Samat al-Khayl, when it was very active, uh, running, and suddenly stops. You said Samat al now, why I want you to know this? Because are you really fasting? Remember, we're talking about the inner dimension of fasting. We're not talking about the external. Are you really fasting? Do you really have a hold of you? Okay? And then, of course, the fasting of the daylight when the sun, when the day ends. Okay? So this is, I'm sure, Sheikh Mustafa, but I love this because it really helps you to understand. It's imsakun makhsus. It's you hold on something in a certain time with a certain condition. That's Ramadan. Outside Ramadan, you're going to say from sun, from uh, dawn to dusk, and then I'm not going to eat or drink and no uh, 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 private or no uh, intimate relationship and with certain condition. I'm not going to go through it. I hope he, I'm sure he did. I asked him. He covered all of the external, right? We'll ask you at the end. Don't worry. Okay, I'm gonna make sure you do it. Okay, tell you. So it is obligatory, right? Not fasting. I want you to know this. Not fasting, intentionally, not forgetful, or not. Somebody says, if you're gonna fast, you're gonna be in big trouble, or I'm gonna kill you. For example, I mean, maybe you don't have it here, but you don't know what happens there. So intentionally, and no reason. What is number one reason you cannot? You. It's okay not to fast. I can. I want to hear it. Raise your hand. Yes. Menstruating woman. And I'm sorry. I can't hear you. Chronic sickness. Not enough answer. When you answer in fiqh, you have to be so particular. Anybody lawyer here? 
It's just like when the, the law, lawyers speak, every word count. Chronic sickness. Don't give me examples, I know chronic sickness. But every diabetic cannot fast, every person with high blood pressure can't fast, if it's gonna make the disease worse, right? So somebody, let's say, have chronic hypertension, take a medicine once a day, right? And they say, they take it usually in the evening before they go to bed, what is the big deal? However, they took it, and then after four or five days, they're not feeling well, and then they go and check their blood pressure, and their blood pressure rocket sky. Now they need, they have to break their fast. They have to. If they do, they are disobeying Allah. So it has to be every time, say, chronic disease that will get worse when they fast. Okay? And then not fasting. I want you to hear this. Some people say they are not Muslim, actually. Not fasting, intentionally. No reason. It's a major sin. Don't take it lightly. May Allah make it easy for, especially for the youth and college students these, these day, this next month, but work on it. For those people who work and during work gets worse, take time off. Your vacation should be in Ramadan, if you can. But for those who can take vacation, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy. Look at this hadith. It's a long hadith, but basically what it is, the people, what happens if you do not fast Ramadan? When you don't fast, the obligatory fasting. Now, everything I'm mentioning today is the obligatory. This hadith of Rasul He said, I slept, right? Uh, uh, and he said, I, I can't fast. To Rasul Or let me read it. Two men came to me, right? While I was asleep. He said, He said to Rasul said, Two men came to me while I was asleep. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, please forgive me. Okay. okay, now read it with me. So two men came to Rasulullah and he was asleep. Remember, the dream of the prophets are true. Oh, yeah, it's definitely true. So what did he see, alayhi salatu wasalam? These two men held my wrist and took to rough, rugged um, mountain. And they said, climb it, go up. And Rasulullah said, I can't. They replied, we will help you. Don't worry. We'll make it easy. So Rasul climbed it to the end and heard loud noises. Loud noises. What they were. I said, what are these? They say, this is the cry of the people of the hellfire. May Allah protect us. Then we worked further. And I came across a man or men hanged from their ankles upside down. Their mouths were torn and blood flowing from them. And I asked, who are they related to Ramadan? Those, the ones who break their fast before the time to break the fast. Not even they didn't fast, but 10 minutes, five minutes. And that's the punishment. What about those who don't fast just because I live in America, let's get too tired, I can't, I have to exercise, I get headache from, all these not genuine, or I haven't tried enough. I don't want to belittle some causes, because some people really can't. But I'm talking about, did I really give it a good try, right? So you know this, you have obligation, you have, um, it's an obligation, we have it from the Quran, which I'm sure Sheikh Mustafa told you, you're only going to hear this verse again and again and again. Which surah is this? Hafal, Hamza Sadqi, which surah is this? In the cow. Okay? Surah Al-Baqarah has all the obligations. The five obligations, the five pillars of Islam are all in Surah Al-Baqarah. Do you know that? Yes or no? So this is fasting. Where is Salah? Obligation of Salah is in, the, in Surah Al-Baqarah. Zakah is in Surah Al-Baqarah. Fasting and Hajj. It's all in Surah Al-Baqarah. Yes? حَفِظُوا عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ وَقُومُوا كَمَانْ يَا يُوسُفْ وَقُومُوا لِلَّهِ قَانِتِينَ This is salah, right? And then الحج أشهر معلومات It's also in Surah Al-Baqarah, right? And then fasting أَرَادِنَا أَمَنُوا كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ Where is the zakah? It's in Surah Al-Baqarah. ما 
MashaAllah, but there is the obligatory of, of zakah. This was actually a question I was asked in the exam. Hmm? Amfiqu? No, that's a, that's a sadaqah. Tayyib. Let's, let's focus on Ramadan. But then I'll, I'll ask you later on, inshallah. Tayyib. This is, you know, ayam al ma'dudat, Allah. Look at the, look at the word. <coughs> when you read the Quran, say to yourself, why did Allah say ayam al ma'dudat? Few days. Is it few days? No. Because next he says shahru Ramadan. Why did he say ayam al ma'dudat? Few days. You count them. Why? What is Allah ta- telling you? And don't make it big deal. It's a few days. Right? Ayyam al ma'dudat. And then me is going to say, but it's 30 days. And he says, okay, Maryam, you're sick. You cannot. You are traveling. Okay, you can do it. And those who cannot, chronic disease, that will become worse when they fast, you feed. Simple, easy. We make it complicated. It's very simple. It's just about my mindset. And then, شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ Sunnah, Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam, Hada, I want you to read this hadith because it will teach you a lot. I'm going to read it in English. And uh, Ibn Abi Haytham, or Ibn Abi Hatam, right? When the verses of, sh- of fasting, right? And, uh, and Bedouin came to Rasul alayhi salatu wa salam. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, Tell me, what did Allah made obligation on me from salah? And he said, the five salawat. He said, okay. Oh, he said, five salawat, unless you want to do extra. Okay, what did he make obligation from fasting? He said, Ramadan, unless you want to make extra. Okay, and he says, what did he make from zakah obligation? And he said, what did Allah make uh, charity upon me as an obligation? He says, zakah, unless you want to make extra. And then the man responded this way. He said, by the one who have honored you, I am not going to do anything more than what you told me. Meaning, only the obligation. Only five salat, only Ramadan, only my zakah. What do you think Rasulullah said to him? If this is you and me, would have said, that's it. He said, if you are sincere, that's what you're going to do. You're going to be successful. Because sometimes when, when he said, I'm going to do the five salah, meaning on time, proper salah, salah, perform salah. I'm going to do Ramadan, I'm going to give it due right. I'm not going to do Monday, Thursday. I'm not going to do any of this. But I'm going to do them. That's why he said, if he is truthful. Because it's very, how many things we say? And when reality comes in, how many things we say but we don't do? So for me, here I am. I have an opportunity. I can do Monday and Thursday. I can do three days. Whatever the reason, then let me perfect Ramadan and perfect this, the fasting, okay? And then you know this hadith, Islam was built on five. Now, why do we fast? And then everybody can tell me, so, that, so I feel how the poor will feel. Okay, thank you. You're not going to feel how the poor will feel. Because the, when the moment you break your fast is a feast, right? And from the time you break your fast till the, the morning, what are you doing? In between taraweeh, every two rakat, you're sipping water, right? Or having your coffee or tea. The main thing, the main thing is this one. Do you really want to obey Allah? You know what I ask myself? You all know this, anybody who have fasted. You have your date, you have the water, you have the food. Right? And the Adhan app says it's 5.36. Right? Why not 5.37? Or why not 5.34? What is it? Two minutes. Or one minute extra. Why? Because Allah said so. And that's the main thing in fasting. So we stop arguing. We stop arguing. This is what it is. a test. Do I really want to obey Allah? Exactly. You walk up 5.40 a.m. and I was like, God, it's four minutes late. Now I can't. And I had my non-Muslim friend. I love the woman. And she used to say, Haifa, what is the big deal? It's four minutes. Come on, no one is seeing you. Literally, she's saying it. Oh. She's seeing it and she means it. And she was laughing. And I start laughing. 
And I said, I can't. I wish I can do it, but it doesn't work this way. So number one, yes. And it is a mean to purify you. I'll come to it later on. And of course, taqwa. What is taqwa? Everybody talks about it. What is taqwa? Allah conscious. What does that mean? You translated. I love this translation. Because somebody will say Allah's fear. It is not Allah's fear. What does it mean? So I look at you and say, MashaAllah, you're a muttaqi. Or I look at you and then I look at myself and say, I'm not a muttaqi. What did you see in me? Or what did I see in you? That I say you're a muttaqi. That's another translation. Piety. Talk to me, reality. I'm in the masjid. Am I a muttaqi? Can a person be in the masjid and not muttaqi? Absolutely. Can a person be outside and a pure muttaqi? So what is he or she is doing? Or not doing? It's one of, there is many, but the one that Sayyidina Ali, I loved it when he said, He will not find you where he doesn't want you. And he will not miss you where he wants you. So it's salah time. Where does he want me? Where, where does he want to see me? Praying, right? He doesn't want me. I'm not talking about when there is things. I'm talking about choice. He doesn't want me to. He doesn't want to see me and I am on my phone. I'm talking to my friends, right? I'm doing things in the masjid and the adhan is going on. So you, whatever, every time that he wants me, I'm there. I'm at work, he wants me to be sincere in work. I'm doing it. I'm at home taking care of my children. He wants me to take care of my children. I'm doing it. I'm muttaqi for him because he is seeing me. So this is what, why fasting teaches you taqwa? Why? What does fasting do that I am a muttaqi? Really? Ramadan, three weeks. And everyone is looking at me, what is she saying? I'm speaking English, right? Okay, what is it? Huh? Having discipline. Having discipline, but that's nothing to do with taqwa. I mean, the non-Muslims sometimes are way more disciplined than us. No. No, don't give me general. It's give me why taqwa, fasting, is a sign of taqwa. That could be any other act of worship. I'm talking about fasting. Because he said it in the verse. At the end of the verse, لَعَلَّكُمْ فَتَّقُونَ So you will become a muttaqi. Yes. Exactly. Who, who can check I am not fasting? Can I say I'm fasting and then I go to the bathroom and I drink water? But who's seeing me? Al-Alim al So I am now Allah conscious because I know he's seeing me and but I am alone. So it is definitely what it's the only one test of taqwa. Why is that? Because even when you are praying, a lot of people can see you praying. But nobody sees you fasting in reality except him. SubhanAllah, right? And of course, it's a training. This is what, when I first was studying Tazkiyah, the Sheikh used to say, you want to kill your nafs? Not kill your nafs, the spiritual nafs to hold it. And everybody says, sure, it's a fast. Fast a lot. He's not talking about fasting Ramadan. Fast a lot. 3D. If you have an issue with anger, anybody ask me, I say fast. You have an issue with addiction, and I'm not talking about substance abuse, other addictions, fast. Because fast is you are literally, it's the rind, you are like a, and please forgive me, you're a human, but it, like the animal, when you put the rind on their mouth and you hold them, and you have control, that's what fasting. And the last one they put is the increased compassion. Because how many of us really, by Allah, and I'm asking everybody, do you really feel compassion to the poor during the Ramadan? Do we? No. All we think about is what we're going to eat for a fall. Where is the compassion? SubhanAllah. So, Anna, to me, this is the least one. And to me, it's these. And actually, to me, is this. Because if I get out of Ramadan and I learn to obey Allah without argument, I am done. I am done. Why me? I come to the masjid. I don't find a place. Masjid is not clean. This and that. Then I didn't. I just stopped eating and drinking. Right? And the uh, virtues of fasting is probably 
gets you all the virtues in this hadith. In this hadith, I told you in Bukhari, Siyam uh, al-Junnah, number one. Siyam is a protection. Junnah is a protection, number one. Now, real fasting. Real fasting, not you are starving and hungry, right? No intimate relationship and do not act with ignorance with each other. Jahad in the Arabic language meaning you're treating people improperly, intentionally, or even if it is unintentionally, but you shouldn't do that. And the biggest test is here. The biggest test I see it in the, in the Masjid al Haram, where people just broke their fast. And subhanAllah, what you see and what you hear. Because that's what he's saying. Number one, it's going to protect you. Protect me from what? From my nafs. Don't have the relationship. Don't do injustice. And if someone, you are not going to start, but how about somebody is really teasing me or somebody is putting me in her head and I am going to really irritate her till she gets so upset. You're going to keep saying to me, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. Now, when you really get so thirsty, I always remember this hadith because it really keeps me going. He made an oath, alayhi salatu wasalam, by the one who owns my, my soul. And who's that? Allah. Look what he said. He didn't say about Jannah. He didn't talk. Fasting is extremely personal relationship with Allah. He didn't talk about Jannah. He didn't talk. Wait, finish and see what I'm going to give you. By the one who owns my soul. The smell of the fasting person, which normally at the end of the day, you don't get a good smell because you get very dry, especially if you're working and your, your work is a lot of talk. He said, by the one who owns my soul, the smell of the person who's fasting, the mouth, is more beloved than the musk, the smell of the musk if you have smelled it, right? And Allah now is saying, just memorize this hadith, enter Ramadan with this spirit. He leaves his food, he, you and me, food and drink and his desire for me. Because I told you, you're doing it only for Allah, he's the only one who sees you. Min ajli, for me, Allah saying this. And then he followed, as li wa na Fasting is for me and I will reward. The scholars teaches you the only act of worship, that there is no number for the reward. And the only other one which are interchangeable is they go together. Sabr. One of the other names of Ramadan, Shahr al-Sabr, is the month of patience. So Allah is saying he leaves everything for me. Like imagine you and me, human beings, and by nature we're miser, but you say, really? You didn't go to stay with me? And how do you feel? Oh, I have to well, I have to do something very special for her or for him. Now imagine Allah saying this. What is he gonna give you? Why not Enter Ramadan with this spirit. Don't enter Ramadan with the spirit how many taraweeh I'm gonna attend or how many times I'm gonna finish the Quran. Then you you are doing it on the external, move deeper. Have this personal relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we said, it is protects you from the hellfire, it will forgive the sins, and also it's the way of entering Jannah, because Jannah, the fasting will protect you from the hellfire. And <clears throat> I met a young girl the other day, her name is Rayyan, she was a she actually, and I said, what is Rayyan? She knew it right away, she says, oh, the gate in Jannah. I was like, make sure you open it for me. But that door is only for the people who fast. So there's so many gates of Jannah. But you know when you have, anytime you hear this, you need to live it. So imagine this masjid. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, right? And all these are closed. But this one only open. And then there's a big sign on it and says, only the people off. You put something. Everybody is waiting there. And you are that person. And you have it, the tag. And then you come in here and you enter and everybody outside is like, why is she or he? How do you feel? Now imagine in Jannah. Imagine when everybody is waiting, well, Allah knows what is happening 
and you just your book is full of fasting. And Babur Rayyan, waiting. Why it's called Rayyan? Mean a Ray. What is Ray for those of you who know Arabic? Water, ex extra water that is usually flow to give it to plants. So here you go. You didn't you didn't drink enough. You are so thirsty. You're tired. Then you come from the door of a rayyan. May Allah make us all enter. Ya Rabbi Amin. Right? And these two hadiths, you're probably going to hear it again and again and again. It's by Sayyidina Abu Huraira. This is in Bukhari. Two things, three things you have to do. I'm not talking about not eating and drinking. I'm talking about internally. Why you are fasting? What are you wanting from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And what do you expect? You need to fast. Why? Oh, it's Ramadan. No, you missed it. Imanan. Because he told me to do. I believe in him and he told me to do. Ihtisab and I know he is going to reward me. Ihtisab is you count. I'm counting my good deeds. And what I'm going to expect, imagine if we all practice Ramadan the way Allah wanted. How many people attend Taraweeh in this masjid? On day average, and not you, the numbers in general. A thousand? I'm assuming, I, I haven't been here, but I was told every bit in here there are people, right? Assume it's a thousand people from the Muslims of Southern California. Those thousand people here left the last day of Ramadan. All the sins were forgiven. How do you see them on the day of Eid? Angels walking on the on earth should be right, but we are not because there's something wrong with our iman and muhtisaba. Don't make Ramadan habit. Don't make Ramadan a, a time to celebrate, or invite, or eat and drink. You missed it. It's a time of the year for me, recharge and reborn. That's how I call it, reborn. I'm a new person the last day of Ramadan. Otherwise, I was just hungry. And very few people lose weight. In fact, many people gain weight because of the type of the food. And this specifically about Laylatul Qadr, right? And don't you, I don't know this masjid, but tell me, don't you only, the odd nights, this masjid is full. And the other nights, the masjid is empty. You missed it. How many times Ramadan they come in later and says, oh, we calculate Ramadan was not the right time. Then you missed it. The last 10 nights, all of them is the little Qadr. I have no idea. And I'm going to treat them all exactly the same. Then I don't miss it. Now, you, I'm sure Sheikh Mustafa covered that. So I'm going to pass this, right? Did he mention, he covered intention, everything? I, I thought so. Right. Okay, I, I'm gonna. I put this because for the sake of I don't. Did he cover this? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, play. So the pregnant and the nursing woman, should she fast or not? This is the no. Who is the faqih here? Here, who said no? Oh, really? And why is that? So every pregnant woman in my office, I tell her go and enjoy your coffee during the day of Ramadan. Astaghfirullah, I love So why did you say? All right, it's okay. I'm just teasing you, you know that. What is Yasmin today? Uh, okay, so you tell her everything and teach her. Okay, so there's three possibilities. She is worried about herself. She's worried about the baby. She's worried about herself and the baby. So the most important thing is scared, worried. If the pregnancy is fine, then at least try. That's what I tell all my patients. At least try. And if you cannot, then you have to break your fast. Because now what happens? But I can't. It's Ramadan. I was like, you have to. Because now you're doing things not pleasing to Allah. Okay? And then the common question. Make it up or pay money. Different opinion. In the Hanafi school, they say she has to make it up unless it's chronic afterward. Or pay money only. No need to fast. That's the Maliki school. Both is actually Imam Ahmed and Shafi'i. So there's a lot of details in it. I'm just giving you the gist of it. So if you see somebody tells you, you only fast, that's an opinion. Only pay, that's an opinion. You do both, that's an opinion also. Right. So these are the, th here you go. 
where you are allowed not to fast. I'm sure he covered it, right? Okay, let's move to that. Already. Things allowed. I put it there because this is the most common question. This Tuesday, actually, is going to be the top 10 questions, the top 10 frequent questions in before Ramadan. Because it's again and again and again. So basically, number one, can I swallow my saliva? Yes, you can. Right. Can I taste the food? Yes or no? Yes, but don't keep tasting. Just a taste. Or if you are a good cook, smell it. And it should be fine. Right? Right? Smelling perfume. Right? And everything, an intimate relation, but without the real intimate relation, that's absolutely fine also. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa used to kiss his wives when he was, and he was uh, uh, fasting. If the menstruating woman or after intimate relationship, can I fast? And then I'm going to say, I'm going to do my ghusl at, one, at 11 o'clock in the morning. Yes, you can. As long as you have your knee. That's the most, most important thing. Can I brush my teeth? Yes. Alhamdulillah. Can I take a, a, a bath or can I take a shower? Yes. Tasting food. Yes, yes you can. Fine. <laughs> That's the second not right answer. Now, the third one, we will have an issue. I'm just kidding. Okay, all these, you're okay with that. Common questions, eye drops, dental work, can I have my pap smear, or can I put medication onto my tongue, can I gargle my mouth, can I do a cardiac cath, can I do endoscopy, all these. Anything that will make me put food in your body will break your fast. So if you're doing endoscopy, the procedure itself does not break your fast, because there's no food coming. But if they're going to put an IV fluid in you, then yes, it will. So pay attention, right? Same thing with biopsies and um, oxygen therapy, intramuscular, intravenous medication, but not fluid. Medications, you're absolutely fine. Okay. <clears throat> I removed a lot. I mean, this was 150 because I did a whole two days before about it. Okay. Now I want you to look at every act of ibadah. I always give this parable as you're baking a cake. Okay. How many of you here love baking? Or know what's the bake? What what do you need to make a cake? Come on, you need flour. You need something something solid, something fluid, right? And you need something to make it get together. And you need an oven. The taste it depends what you put in this, right? Okay. So this is the most important. We call it the pillars of every act of worship. Then are you gonna give people cake just like that, or you wanna garnish it and put frosting, chocolate, you, right? So this is the frosting and chocolate of fasting. Where you're going to give Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not just a bare cake. You're going to give the best cake to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, it's a parable, but I want you to think of this. Number one. So every time you're going to do this, think not because this is how they taught me. This is going to make Allah happier. This is going to make my fasting better. So hopefully I'll get from this door. So number one, quickly Break your fast. Quickly, break your fast. Don't wait five or ten minutes. Or let me finish. I see this with women especially. Let me finish the cook. Let me give a, wash some dishes. No, you run and you break your fast. Don't have to eat. Get your dates, drink water, whatever you want. Right? Then you make a dua at time you break your fast. That's the time supplication is, is answered. A lot of charity. As I said yesterday, it's not only money. Be generous in everything. Right? Night salah. Night salah, best if you do it alone, even if you did taraweeh here. Go home and do two rakat to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that you have never done before. Feel it, right? Of course, atikaf for the woman, you can do it at home. For I don't know, do they do atikaf here? They do? Yeah, but really atikaf. I'm not talking about atikaf with your phone and friends. It's babies, they sleep over in the masjid. That's not atikaf. You know how did he do atikaf for Rasulullah Anybody? Anyone? He did atikaf in the masjid, right? Exactly. He puts a small tent in the masjid. And he goes in the tent and zip it, and nobody talks to him. He goes out only for salah. And he is in the middle of the masjid. Look at our atikaf. It's sleepover. Sleepover in the masjid. Everybody bringing their friends or their coffee, their tea. I'm talking about proper atikaf. 
You need to have suhoor. Don't tell me I cannot wake up. You're not doing it because you need it. You're doing it because you are beautifying your fasting. So put it next to you, glass of water. And just wake up and say, Ya Allah, this is for you because you told me. Now it's an act of worship. Again, and then all these, because of the time. So why you need to hasten your fasting? Because that's what he said, Ali salatu And he said, people are still, people will remain on the right path as long as they break their fast quickly. Okay, there's some other Muslims who delayed it, delayed it 10 or 15 minutes or 20 minutes. Don't, don't do that, right? Also, duha. Duha, duha, all the time you're fasting. They said it's not only the time you break your fast, as long as you're fasting. It's one of the people, the, one of the categories where the duha is granted. The person who's fasting till he or she breaks her fast. Or the traveler till he comes back. So keep making dua. Make a list actually. Make a list. I really mean it. Make a list every day so you don't forget. Don't forget to pray for your grave. May Allah make it a piece of Jannah. Don't forget to, Ya Allah, give me Jannah to Firdaus. I want the Rasul next to me. He will answer. He will make it do that. And he have lofty goals, as we say, not only in dunya, but also for Akhirah. And keep saying, say, of course, pray for your children and for everything else. Pray for the Ummah, pray for the people of Gaza, but also for yourself individually. 50 years from now, nobody will remember us. I'm not talking about you, but majority of us here, who's going to remember us? We're going to be under the grave and we're done. Good luck if somebody's going to come even and visit us. Well, I need to build my Akhirah, my house of Akhirah now before. Nobody else will build, build it for me. And I just shared this uh, hadith with you, right? And, our, and the sa'im in the fitrah, that's why you focus at the moment you are putting it. And they say, as long as you are eating the date or drinking the water. He said, and this is by Ibn Majah narrated, that a sa'im, Abu Sayyidina Allah ibn Abbas said, the fasting person has a supplication the moment, at the moment he or she breaks her fast, that it will not be but accepted. لا ترد. And this is a Rasul Imagine he said, Ya yeah, Allah, by, by, I swear by you, if I've done anything good in my life and I'm putting the date, you're going to get me to Jannah. What do you think Allah will do? SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. And then, <clears throat> this is the dua you say, not for yourself, the dua when you break your fast. ذهب الظما وابتلت العروق وثبت الأجر وثبت الأجر إن شاء الله. Thirst is gone, and the it says the عروق the veins now is wet, which basically you feel it. You know, do you remember the first thing? Ah, ya Allah, how how thirsty I am. That's what it is. And and you say to Allah out of confidence that Allah will never let you down. The reward is there. In my book, that day I fasted. It's it's there, bi'idnillah, right? Now, as I said before, every, how many millions, how many millions were fast in three weeks? What is the difference between your fast and mine, and mine and yours? This is one of them, jazakallah khair habib. One of them is, you need to control your anger. And it, it shocks me when I see people shouting in Masajid in Ramadan because of the place or because of the Imam did this or did that. Really? Is that fasting? Is that Ramadan? Controlling the anger. And this is again, when someone irritates you, you get angry. Keep telling yourself, I'm fasting, I'm fasting, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. And you need to train. And if you see someone, look at them and says, you're fasting. Remind them. Sometimes we just need this word to wake up, as they say. And then suhoor, tasahharu fa inna fi suhoori baraka. It's an order from Rasulullah Wasallam. Do your suhoor. Morning, whatever it is. He didn't say make a feast. Certain countries in the world, it's feast. They invite you and you say, what is that? No. Just something simple keeps you going. And if you feel always thirsty, make sure you Drink enough water. You need to take medication, take it. You think you may get headache. Take your medication before 
but do something and your niyyah is as-suhoor baraka it is basically and it will bring blessings to your day okay and delay the suhoor as much as you can they said we ate to about time they of reading 50 verses from from the quran 50 so you know 30 sometimes don't worry about that because sometimes you know what you you prayed alhamdulillah then you took a nap and guess what you jumped out of the bed and there's only five minutes left don't worry do it and even scholars have said even if you are drinking and the adhan went on keep drinking till the adhan end you can do that but don't do it intentionally every time i was like okay i still have 10 minutes let me check my don't do that but if it happens alhamdulillah right siwak this is something we really number one myself we need to get to the habit of it and siwak is not toothbrush and it's not brushing my teeth because when i say brushing my teeth i removed the act of worship the siwak is the siwak where ahmed you had it yesterday you still have it yeah hamza it is an act of worship it's an act of worship and put it next to your sajjada put it in the kitchen and the more especially during fasting because it makes your teeth it makes your gums healthier i tried it actually I and mean, i tried it just to see really this is true for 10 days in ramadan i didn't i didn't brush my teeth i just did siwak subhanallah it's amazing well i'm not saying this just to yani you know, but it's true it's true you just do your siwak with every salah and you don't brush your teeth in the night and see what will happen to your gums subhanallah right be very generous in ramadan we talked about this yesterday forgive people pardon people give your place F- feed others don't feel all your the people you know feel your feed your neighbors feed the the, the needy uh, somebody doesn't have a car do things for them many be a giver be a giver here rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam this is the hadith actually he said rasulullah so they said uh, sayyidna abdullah ibn abbas said i've never seen rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam more generous than in ramadan he's always generous but in ramadan he is super generous to the point that when jibril the last year he died he finished quran twice only that's why i so get surprised when people not the huffal they just keep doing khatma he did it only once only the last year before he died he did it twice right the things you don't like should start uh, avoid i'm sure Sheikh, uh, uh, mustafa why it's called ramadan why it's called ramadan what is the origin of it if anybody knows arabic yes Naam? i'm sorry compassion what did he say? Not passion? Ashes. You're close, but it is not. It's excess heat. Ramadan, the origin of Ramadan is Ramad. And Ramad is excessive heat, not the ashes, it's the heat itself. And this is what they say. They say three meanings of it. It's either the sun with maximum heat or it's the rain that come just before the fall. Light rain, when the rain comes in and it is very hot. And a light rain, you say, Allah, hmm. Do you know the feeling? That's Ramadan. So Ramadan, basically, the pay, why the fasting person feels the heat and the pain of hunger and thirst. We all do that. And number two, the hearts learn, now coming internal, the heart learns the heat of the reminders, how many lectures you hear, or how many times you hear the Quran, and you're praying so much, your heart changes. I doubt if anybody in this room, in the whole 30 days that's gonna come, or last year, no way, not a single day you shed a tear. I'm sure you shed a tear, at least one day, men and women, at least one day, right? And, and I'm, alhamdulillah, I've been to haram more than once in Ramadan. Sometimes there is imam cannot finish al fatiha and I was like, Rabbi Fatiha, I mean, how many times you read the Fatiha? He cannot. He cannot. And there's certain verses, they break. I mean, these men, they break. Why? Because the hearts get softer, softer, softer. You know, when the sun melts, they say that's what Ramadan should do to your heart, subhanAllah. And also, it's the heat that will burn your sins, right? And Rasulullah Wasallam said this, and I want you to know this because don't blame it on shaitan. Anything I do in Ramadan 
disobey Allah is nothing to do with shaitan. Don't blame him. It is me. Because the moment Ramadan comes in, shayateen, not one, all the shayateens, they are chained. So if I bite, bite somebody during Ramadan, it's not shaitan. It is me, my nafs. If I disobey Allah, if I say things, whatever I'm doing, watch haram, whatever I'm doing, is nothing to do. Because if I dakhla shahr Ramadan, kutihat abwaab al-jannah wa ghulbiqat abwaab al nawm There's more than one version of it. The moment Ramadan comes in, the doors of Jannah is open, the doors of the hellfire is closed, and the shayateen is actually chained. So I say this to myself, woe on me. Shaytan is chained. Jannah doors are open. Hellfire is closed. And still I did not get better. Still I didn't do extra. I mean real extras, not extras of habit. Then I have a problem. Something is in me, myself. Fasting is for Allah, as He said, um, Subhana. Fasting internally, you're doing things and you're leaving things. And that's what they say. Fasting is have patient. What are you doing and what are you leaving? What are you leaving? Things that's halal. You're leaving things that's halal. What's wrong with water? Hala. You're leaving it. And what are you doing? Obeying Allah. Don't forget this. Don't look at me. Anymore. What is she saying? You're obeying Allah by leaving things that you normally, why do I have to leave? It's the same concept when you go to Hajj. When you get into Ihram, you start things that you normally do. What is wrong with cutting my nails? What is wrong with uh, putting a cream with a, with a little bit of a sense or the oil drink? I'm obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you are not eating, look at the food and say, I'm I, Allah, I really want to eat this. He says, Ya Rabbi, I'm leaving it for you. Because you told me this. And I am not saying this, although I really want to say it and I can say it. But because this is you told me and this is for you. Change it. This is what I keep reminding everybody. Change Ramadan from the casual, from the usual. Right? We, I mean, my worry is we, one day Ramadan will become like Christmas. It will be stripped from its spiritual presence. Do you feel Christmas is a religious holiday? It's becoming what? It's becoming commercial. Absolutely. Buy and sell and everybody. That's my fear. The highest, it's so sad, but it's true. You can look it up. The highest month where the Muslims spend for food and drink is in the month of? Is that the essence of it? No, because we are gradually stripping it. People just don't sleep all day, don't eat, don't drink, and then they come, they break the fast, and everything backs to normal. Then I didn't change, I didn't do it. We don't, we need to bring back the essence of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said for us, and this is beautiful, how does Imam ibn al-Qayyim say? It's fasting is leaving what the nafs enjoys and delight. Enjoys and how many of you love food here? Everybody, right? But you love something I don't, you love something, right? We love food. It's one of the enjoyment of, and it's one of the enjoyment of Jannah. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, one of the things he keeps reminding us that the Jannah has food, right? Has food, has beautiful beds, has all this, but food. But Allah says, it's, you're leaving it for me. It's a secret. It's strengthened me. And it's, again, as I said in the beginning, great way of taqwa. And it's the rain. You hold yourself. You're leaving things. You're, you're leaving things you normally do. And they're not necessarily haram, but for the sake of Allah and Allah only. One of the major elemental helps I've tried it, and I was advised in the beginning, that every time, and I say this to everybody, every time you feel you are moving away from Allah, and you know this, when your salah becomes, you don't feel it, when you're doing things, start fasting, and see how you will go back. As it, literally, I call it the magnet that brings me back to Allah. Practice it. Be a people who, who do fasting more than just in Ramadan, but in general, even in Ramadan, make it the magnet that will bring you back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
there's a three kinds of fasting. This is going to be almost the last couple of slides. Let's see which one you are. Read it and tell me which one you are. There's three levels. This is human beings. So there's ordinary fasting, and there is the fasting of the special, and there's the fasting of the special of the special. Which one you are, do you think? Everybody will say, I'm the special. Ordinary. How many say I'm ordinary? How many say I am special? My fasting is special. How many say special of the special? What about the rest? No fasting? There is no, there is no lower or higher. It's only three. You're either ordinary, special, or special of a special. Which one you are? Let's see. Ready? Bismillah. All right. So reality of fasting is why I'm saying because I'm going to take you through it. If you did not stay away from lying, foul language, I want to hear, I want the young especially pay attention. Recently, I was with Sheikh Omar in a program together, Sheikh Omar Suleiman, and we were talking about the Islamic activists and everything, and he said something, I couldn't believe it. And he said, it's real. In these marches, that the, the Washington March, the 400,000, almost million people went out. And he said, I was there and all this youth activist, and I hear all this foul language coming from the youth activist. And he looked at them and says, and he quote the hadith, ليس المؤمن بطعاني ولا لعاني ولا فحاش ولا بذيء لساء ولا صخاب في الأسواق. The believer is not a person who speaks in, does or speaks immorality or obscenity, not. So if I am fasting, this is what the hadith look at. Now you're looking at the inner. If you're not going to change the way you speak, and the way you deal with people, Allah doesn't need your hunger and fast. SubhanAllah. Allah doesn't need you to feel, to feel hungry. The essence of it, the inner is it. And you all know this hadith. So other than the right of nest, I'll, I'm going to come back. Don't worry. Don't you think I forgot the levels of fasting, right? When you, essence of fasting is something you want, but you're not doing it, although you can. You open the fridge. Right at four o'clock. And what do you see in the fridge? Everything you want. Right? Especially if you like, let's say you make this whatever fruit tart and it's in the fridge and you smell it and you see it and you want it and you love it and it's it's good for you and you can have it, but you're leaving it. Let alone you're leaving haram. Subhanallah. Um, this is the same hadith. So what is the fasting of the ordinary? Come on, many of you raised your hand. What is the fasting of the ordinary? I'm not, I'm not asking you very, this is a very simple answer. What is the fasting of the ordinary? All of you are ordinary, by the way, everybody, right? Meaning you all gonna fast the ordinary fast, which is you're not gonna eat or drink or have a relationship or intentionally vomit from the time to the time. That's everybody. That's all the Muslims. Do you wanna be like everybody? Or do you wanna be special? Fine. So what is the special? What are you gonna do so your fast is special better than mine? What makes you special? Raise your hand, anybody. Yes, please. Changing your habits, we, we need to be more specific. You're right, the general is right, but you have to be specific. You know, you're, you're getting upper. So what is the difference between college graduate, right, master's degree and PhD? This is how it is. What is the difference? What do you do? So my fasting is special. Yes. Say that again. Give me something you're going to do or not do. Uh, yeah, okay, it's, it's something you have to do or something you're not going to do. Yes. Extra salah at night. Extra salah at night, everybody comes to the masjid and do taraweeh. Are they special? Okay, two things. You're going to stay. Now listen to me. Now you're going to be special. Right? The special of the special, only thing I can do, I'm going to make duha. Maybe you, but I'm talking about myself. The special is you're going to leave everything, everything 
that is haram completely. Now you're going to say, oh, that's easy. Really? Okay. When you break your fast, if you have this cup of tea and you left a little bit at the end, your fasting is not special because that's haram. You wasted. You're in the masjid and you have this bottle. I don't know. They have a bottle of water here, right? And then you end up the salah and you're going to see, see, right? Half of it here, a quarter is here. You're not special. You use the tissue and then you left the tissue. Well, they have a company of cleaning. Yes, your fasting is not special. Again, you come and park wrong. You blocked somebody. You're here. And then the, the break. And the person next to you is still praying. And you're talking with your friend. Talking. You just heard a Muslim. Your, their fasting is not special. So I need you when you say haram is don't think of the major, major ones. Alhamdulillah. I mean, majority of us don't do this major, major. But there's a lot of things we, we do it and you think it's not a big deal. You want me to tell you one? Are you all ready? When you go and do your wudu and you leave the faucet running and you're doing wudu. Absolutely you disobeyed Allah. Try this. I tried it at home. Put a container under the faucet when you're doing wudu. Okay? And leave it as you normally do. And see how much water. Right? Next time, put the same container. And then every time you are not any part of your body, not under the faucet, close the faucet. And see how much difference is in the water. That will tell you how much you have wasted. Because you still did your wudu. Right? And by, by the way, isbaghul wudu, perfecting wudu, Many people think it's by a lot of water. It's absolutely the opposite. Is when every part of the wudu will be wet the way that pleases Allah and you have used the minimum amount. He used alayhi salatu wasalam to do wudu in this. Even some says even less than that. To wash our hands, we already feel that. So special fasting is when you start, when you start paying attention to the details. Many they don't. It's not going to negate your fasting. Don't take me wrong. Your fasting is correct. That's why I said the fasting of the ordinary. But I'm moving. Right? I'm not going to have grudges in my heart against somebody. I'm not going to say this and that. She did this or she didn't. Or he said salam or he didn't. That's, I'm, not, I'm going to be the ordinary. Now the special of the special. It's very difficult. I pray to Allah every, every Ramadan. Give it to me and then I'm ready to go. I don't know when it's going to happen. What is the special of the special? So you left every haram and you have done every good. That's a special. Now what is more than that? Your heart will have nothing in it when you are fasting other than Allah. You're focused on, you're not thinking of what I'm going to eat, or what, when, when I'm going to go, who's going to invite me, all this dunya, halal things, your heart will be focused on Allah only. That's why they said khususul khusus. The special of the special. So I don't eat and drink, everybody. Now I'm going to move on and I'm going to do nothing haram, no ill thinking, nothing in my heart. I'm, I'm going to do all the good things in the best way I can. Now I'm here. Imagine how many have filtered from here to here. Now how many will filter from here to here? Where are you going to stay? That's actually one of the reasons Allah Rabban knows why there is atikaf, because that's one of the main goals of atikaf, that he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forced us to strip ourselves away from everything in dunya and focus on him only, subhanAllah. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all a psalm li wa najibi, psalm is for me, and he will reward us, ya Rabbi Ameen, and remember this also. I love this one, and I keep again reminding myself, it's two moments of joy for the person who's fasting. The moment when you break your fast, because you're so happy. Don't tell me you're not. Yes, I am. Ah, oh, drinking my water and eating. But the best one is when you meet him. And when the person who always fasts, meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's a lot of fasting in your book. And when everybody wants to come to Taraweeh, and beautiful, ask yourself for this. Is your siyam today, the fasting today, is equal to the number of raka'at you did? Meaning, this is extra. 
how many extras you did for that fasting to move it. Are you all with me? Because everybody will tell you taraweeh is not an obligation. We know that. But we all do it. Beautiful. I love to hear the Quran. I love to be in masjid. Beautiful. And we felt it during COVID, what, what happened to us. God, I'm not going to go to the masjid. What am I going to do? But Allah showed us the beauty of not also. Alhamdulillah. But this is all extra. What extras you did for your siyam to lift it up? Did you all get it? What did I do for that siyam to lift it up to make it at the level of my taraweeh or even more? And remember this. This is actually what should be one of the principles that we all learn and teach our kids. Leave things for Allah. Don't leave it because you don't want it. And don't leave it because you cannot have it. We cannot leave our phones. We are addicts to our phones. May Allah forgive me for everybody. And he said to him, this is what he said to a companion, anytime you leave something for Allah, Allah will give you better. Anytime, inna kalam, anytime, leave something, illa baddalaka Allah, bihi ma huwa khayrun laka min. Allah will replace this with something which is better, better physically and better for you. Let us learn to leave not only food and drink, which alhamdulillah, this is one of the things of Ramadan, but let us learn to leave things for Allah, things we love, things we really want, but I'm not going to do it because it's taking me away from Allah. It's making me indulge more in this dunya. It is getting much harder these days because everything is available. Everything with just your credit card and you can have it. These days, you just order it and next day it's on your door. And especially, again, I remind you all, as somebody who lived most of her life outside California, it's even much harder here. It's absolutely dunya. Dunya opened completely here. From the weather to the beauty to the, everything is beautiful here. So it can easily get lured by the dunya. But remember always the focus. Now, how many of you have your parents still alive? Right? And especially older parents. And this is what he said, alayhi salatu wasalam, raghima anfurajul, meaning the man, raghima anf, meaning humiliated. When they, you see it, may Allah protect us, when they hold the head of the person, and they put their face in the, these days, wal'ayadu billah, they put it in water, or in that time, they put it in the dust. That's the bottom of a humiliation. And he says, may that person be humiliated. If these three will happen to him, and he didn't do it. Number one, my name, meaning of Rasul many of you didn't do it in this gathering, and he did not send salah ala nabi Make it a habit, always. SubhanAllah, very recently, when we were in Umrah, they brought us a shaykh from Umm al-Qura. Ya Allah, may Allah, yani la uzaki ya Allah, but there's something in him the moment he entered. He was not very old, actually. And the way he sat, it was two of them. So the first one was giving the lecture, and he was sitting. Is something in this man different? SubhanAllah, I don't know the man. And then the sheikh was giving the talk. So of course, Rasul alayhi salatu wasalam knew. And then when it came to him, he mentioned this hadith. And he said, why don't you send salah ala nabi alayhi salatu wasalam? It's for the last 20 minutes. How many times his name was mentioned? Why you're not doing it? You'll be humiliated on the day of judgment when the Rasul name is mentioned, whether a Nabi or Rasul, Muhammad, any of these, alayhi salatu wasalam, and you don't say it and you're still not doing it. Number two, that's what related to Ramadan. He lived to see Ramadan, finished Ramadan, and Ramadan left, and his sins were not forgiven. He will be humiliated. And the third one is regarding parents. He lived to see his parents getting older. Alzheimer, they are more needy, their temper is different, right? And he did not get to Jannah by serving them. So we don't want to be those people, subhanAllah. And this is the last thing. I loved it, actually. For those of you who know Arabic, read it. This is actually, I think, from uh, Ibn Rajawzi. It says, fasting is from the most honorable act of worship and a mean to get closer to Allah, nothing like it will bring you there. And it is the norm 
and we have the Torah righteous people. And it is the banner of people of taqwa. It purify the nafs, it improve the habits, and it is a school of taqwa. And it is the, the, the school of guidance. Whoever entered that house, that school, honestly, fully, and did it correctly, he will be he will graduate with the degree, it says piety and straightness, and he will be successful in dunya and after. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among those. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all look at Ramadan and fasting itself is in a different way that I look at me and I actually I remember I will end up with this. This is 30 or yeah, 30 years ago when I first started residency, we had a, a physician who was a Muslim actually. And I didn't know he was a Muslim. And the colleague says, oh, it's next month is Ramadan. He will be very different. The non-Muslims paid attention. SubhanAllah, then I came to know him, mashallah, tabarakallah. And of course, Allah tested him. Three of his children are special needs. And they said, he's very different in that month. That's what we should be. This is how we will change, and we will change the people around us. But if we're going to be coming here and doing the usual, and the food, and drink, and having fun, then we didn't do much. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, may Allah show us truth as truth and help us to follow it and show us falsehood as falsehood and protect us from following it. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us life to live to get to Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make this Ramadan the best ever. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all our sins. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for our brothers and sisters in Gaza, especially in Rafah. I just can't think of how Ramadan will come on them. Subhanallah, subhanallah. Yani I can't, I can't imagine how they're going to fast. Half of the family are gone, no food, subhanallah. And I'm sure their fasting and their Ramadan will be better than many of us here. May Allah forgive us all. Jazakumullah khayran, subhanakallahumma wa bihamdu. Ashadu an la ilaha illa an astaghfiruka wa atubu lih. Sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabi tasliman kathira. Any questions? I will do this later. Yes. Any questions, please feel free. You want to take a break? That's also your choice. Okay. When I ever give a talk, if there's no question in medicine, they tell you either you understood everything or you understood nothing. So I hope it is the first one. Yes. Any question? Yes, please. Man. You want to give her the yes, the mic, Habib. Thank you. Jazakallah. Um, they said all the time, before you put it, as you are eating it. Because hatta yaftar, yaftar is they say, it's a So as long as he is eating, so Allah is extending it. No. Eat it because it's, you're eating it quickly because it's sunnah and it's a good deed to break your fast quickly. Yes, please. Uh, here you go. I, uh, I... Yes, yeah. Go, give her the mic. Oh, Bismillah. Are you okay? Alhamdulillah. I'm sure he is fine. Perfect. Yes. Don't worry. It should be light. It shouldn't be dark. It should be completely dark. Some will say sometimes give yourself a little bit more time. Some say. I wouldn't do two or three minutes. And I usually, I follow the sunnah, tajil iftar. I have it, you, you check more than one app, they all tell you 5.36, I do it right away. Because then you're going to get into the uh, too much and picking, and I wouldn't do this. I'm doing it because that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, break your fast quickly. We have the app, you follow it, alhamdulillah. Yes, please. Upstairs, if you have questions also. Yes. Alaikum yes. salam. I'm sorry, uh, about? Jewelry. Yes. So for jewelry that we own for ourselves and we wear it on a daily basis, 
there's, there's two different opinions about it, and Sheikh Mustafa just coming in. The zakah on the jewelry. Some says if this is something you wear daily, there is no zakah on it. Some says completely there is no zakah on the hadith. And some says all of it has value, and one day you will sell it, so all of it you pay zakah. And also it depends. On, here you go. You entered in the question of zakah. <laughs> I said it's like, where is he? So please come on in. Yeah. So the question about zakah for jewelries. Yes. Uh, I need to give it to you. I gave her general, so let's see what this means. So, yeah, there's three opinions on uh, the car of jewelry. So, the first opinion is the Hanafi school, which means, which says that you have to pay the car of jewelry every single year. So, you're going to weigh your jewelry, the gold value of it, and you're going to be paying the car every, every single year. The second opinion is that there is no zakah on jewelry because they believe that the hadiths are not strong enough to necessitate that you have to pay on this. This is the Shafi school and some of the other scholars as well. The third opinion is kind of a hybrid opinion. This, I slightly lean towards this opinion. That is, there's two types of jewelry. One type of jewelry is for personal use. You use it every single day. You wear this bracelet, you wear this necklace, you wear your wedding ring, and all of those things. Because it's like personal use, you don't have to pay on it, because you're using it all the time. Then you have some sisters, or maybe many sisters, their life savings is in jewelry. Like their entire net worth is in gold and in jewelry. And that jewelry sits in a safe deposit box most of the year, and they only use it on some occasions. That's almost like their savings in case they ever need it on a rainy day. It's almost like an investment for them, it's a backup cash for them, whereas they could have invested. So this, the third opinion says that you have to pay as a count on that jewelry which you use very rarely, you use it more as a savings, but the jewelry that you use on a personal level, on a regular basis, you know, maybe daily or weekly, that one you don't have to pay. But these are all, but if you are well off, my advice is just pay. Just pay. You know, if you give one, if you have so much jewelry, you just have, you give one thing, or you give one little, you know, piece of gold out of all of that you have, one, you know, fortieth of what you have, it's going to help the people who are poor. It's going to help purify even your heart from, uh, you know, piling up too much wealth. And at the end of the day, if you think about it, you're supposed to be giving more than zakat every single year to the charity. There's so many causes to give to. So if you calculate all the charity that you plan on giving, if you gave that from your jewelry, you can count it as some of the sadaqah that you've been giving throughout the year. So that's, you should be on the same side. If you can do that, you're well off. You should do that. But all of the opinions are pretty... This is one of those issues where there's a strong difference of opinion among scholars. And that's why you know we shouldn't be so insistent on this is the only opinion. So I'm not going to tell you to say, no, all we need to follow is one particular opinion. Because the evidence is pretty strong on all sides. Go. Okay, um, so you want your question? Yeah, here's your very welcome. Okay, perfect. Um, so I have a question. Um, so my mom passed away last year. And um, in the last sort of time of like a year or two, she was able to fast because she was, um, you know, trying to feel really like not well because she's elderly. Uh, did I still be able to pay the deal for her? And if you didn't know, pay the, the deal when she was not fasting? No, she doesn't have the money. My mom ah. really is a life insurance company to pay for her also after. And now you can do it? Nobody in the family can do it? Like no. brother or sisters? No, all of her brothers died when she passed away. So it's just me left. And um, like I have cousins, but I'm not. No, I'm talking about the immediate family. Yeah. 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 So how many nuns? So that would be 11. Okay, so 11 years and 11 nuns. Yeah. yeah. Times 30, 330. What do you do? The standard is if you can't, you can't. I always like to, to, get, to go, I like khusus al khusus. I like the special of the special. It, if you can fast, if you can, and this is a 300 and plus days, right? 
uh, if you can, but not now, throughout the year for her, would be great. Because there's some opinion says you can make the fasting for the person who didn't fast. Since you cannot pay the money, but can you do that? Or even better, you fast and you gift her the reward of your fasting. How, how would I break it? How would I break it? You don't want anything. At the end, when you put, it, when you put the date, yeah, Allah, give, just like you read Quran and you give the, uh, the gift yes, there. Yes, yeah, just, yeah. But you don't have to. But it's, again, the highest level. If you fasted, you don't have to pay the money, okay. right? Exactly. Okay. You don't do two things, okay. you, and you don't have to do two things. Let's put it this. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. yes. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah, but yet niya, you did the niya the night? Yes? And before Fajr, you said to yourself, I'm going to try to fast tomorrow. If I'm able, able, if I'm, I'm you did that? Because free Ramadan, tabiyu to niya, they call it. You need to have the niya before. And I recommend this for everybody. This is also for the sisters. You're not sure. They, they may get, they may, for the cycle, maybe, maybe not. Or maybe I'm done, maybe I am not. So you need to do that. Unless you made the niya from the beginning of the month, and you said, my niya is to fast the whole Ramadan. But the niya in Ramadan is, is needed. And you, and you have to make it before Fajr. So what if, um, can I speak? Yeah, sure. What if I, something that has been done, and I just celebrate it? Is this element where I say, I should stop fasting, or I should have to do something? Say that again, your niya? As long as you're sick, right? You can answer it, Sheikh As long as you're sick, you can fast. Yes. So, your question about sickness or about the As long as you're sick, you don't need to fast. When you are in not sure what's going to happen in the morning, this is what normally is going to happen, right? Every morning you wake up and you say, If I'm feeling better, I'm going to fast. You wake up in the morning for Sahur, you say, I'm feeling good. You have Sahur, you fast. You have these things, you're good. Is there a problem with that? Yeah, this happens all the time. What happens? Where, where's, where's the teaching? And all of Ramadan, it happens because of Ramadan. So you can't fast? So the issue is about not fasting. Yes, if you feel sick enough that you cannot fast, you have a legitimate excuse to break your fast. If it's happening every day, and you start the fast, and you say, I think I'm okay. And then by 2 p.m., I'm feeling absolutely horrible, and I'm too sick to fast. You stop the fast, and you try again the next day. So let me try again. I'm feeling good in the morning. And then you're feeling absolutely horrible to the point that you're being sick. Try as many times as you can. And if it works, it works. And if it doesn't, you know, you make up those fasts with your brother. Whether in Ramadan or not. Is it only in Ramadan, or even if you do? Any fast. So you may be somebody who has a chronic disease. Then you add the chronic disease. If you can't. Either chronic, or you try to make up those fasts in the winter. When you're shortest. Shortest. Days. If you still can't do it, still That's happens, it. then yeah, then you're, you're then you don't you paint, then you, you paint. You do, uh, yes. Um, so something for on Christmas, after I see the doctor, I I think I like to take a, a bath. And but there's been times that I'm like, I think I'm gonna take a bath and I kept waking up like three AM. And so I'm like, Oh my god, I can't I just now can't tell you what is the latest you can say you have. Okay. So, Isha, prayer shouldn't be delayed past midnight. But if it is delayed past midnight, you can pray all the way up to Fajr, but it's not true. You should not be doing that. So try your best not to do that. But if it happens, it's still not considered Allah. And this is according to most scholars, but there's a difference of opinion. And midnight is not 12 o'clock. Yeah. Midnight is the middle of the night. So, for example... It's no, from Maghrib to Fajr. Yeah, it's close to midnight, but it's not exactly not 12 o'clock. So oh. you, see, just, you calculate the middle time between uh, Maghrib and Fajr, and you divide by two. Add them together and divide.
So I mentioned this. Were you here for the Zakat yeah. seminar or no? I, I was there. Okay. Remember the long-term loans that I talked about? The only the monthly payments on long-term loans is going to be subtracted for the purpose of Zakat operation. Remember that? Is that answer your question? Yeah, so when it comes to two issues, the number one, the rental property, and there's the loan on it. So, um, so the, you're not going to subtract more than the monthly payment on that one thing. Number two, meaning basically you're not subtracting anything. It's not a Number two, rental property, you have to pay the account on it, not on the value of the property, but on the income that comes in from the property, it's going to go in your bank account. When it goes in your bank account, whatever other money was there, it's going to Expenses come out to take care of the property. Income comes in from the rental of the property. You're going to check your bank account. Whatever is there, the income from that property already went in. You factored it into your account. And the house which you are living in, that is the value of the house? House in which you are living, real so estate is a is guy exempt. You do not pay on real estate, whether it's an investment property or whether it's your personal property. Unless you're in the business of flipping homes. If that's your business and you buy and sell homes, you will pay the gap on your inventory every single year and hold out your inventory. Okay. okay, good question. Sorry, this is one part I forgot. I explained it even during one of the days in Asia. A lot of people don't understand this point of when do you pay your account? So I'm going to give you a scenario. Let's say there's a boy named Yusuf and he's a teenager. And he gets a job. First time in his life. He makes one thousand dollars per month. First month, he makes a thousand dollars. Second month, he has two thousand dollars. Third month, by the sixth month, he has six thousand dollars now. So remember we talked about the minimum amount, you were here, right? So that so the minimum amount was three ounces of gold, six thousand dollars. As soon as he gets his sixth paycheck, assuming that his father is very generous and doesn't make him pay anything, and all of his money goes into his bank. Now he has six thousand dollars in his bank account. First time he ever went over the value of three ounces of gold. He's going to mark the Islamic date on his calendar. Let's assume January first. Huh? Let's assume that Ramadan the first, the first day of Ramadan, for example. Okay, he marks that date in his calendar. He does not pay zakat yet. Now he has one year to make more money, spend money, invest his money, whatever he wants to do. One year later. It's Ramadan the first. Let's assume he kept his job. His father was still nice to him and never made him spend any money. How much money does he have in his bank account? Eighteen thousand dollars, right? So now he has to pay the cap on what amount? Two point five percent of eighteen thousand dollars. So that's the date he's going to pay the cap. So it's the first time he made that much money. You have to mark your dates. So let's say it was on January 1st. And the next year, he has to pay on January 1st. So a lot of people don't understand that the first time they start making this money, they go over the threshold, that's the date in which they're paying Zakat. Like now, can you recalculate that date by paying early and say, I think it's so much easier to pay in Ramadan. Let me just pay one year early so that every Ramadan I keep on paying. You can do that. But keep in mind that this is not the way the Sahaba always did. That's to make our life easier. The Sahaba paid zakah throughout the year, depending on when they reach the amount of the minimum amount. And that actually helps the poor people, because if everyone gives zakah only in Ramadan, no one's paying anything outside of Ramadan. Right? So that, that was, the system was not that everyone's paying zakah at the same time. My point is, everybody pays zakah at a different time, based upon when they first started making the minimum amount of money, which is three ounces. And you forgot, right? Yes, 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 exactly. So, uh, convert or no convert? Let's say people forget. Many Muslims have forgotten. They say, I don't remember, I didn't really know how to pay the guy, I don't know what to do. Estimate when that might have been. Where does it start now? Make an estimation. So, for you, make an estimation from the day that you accepted Islam, approximately however long it was, and say, you know what? From that day, I can start paying the guy if I'm well off. If not, one year from the date that I first had, I will start paying my zakat. 
other elements of it. Yes. Okay, so here's the simple way of looking at it. Um, you look at two points of time. You look, right now, do I have more than $6,000 or not? And then you look, one year later, do I have more than $6,000 or not? If I had more than 6000 here and more than 6000 here, I pay 2.5% on this amount. My money is going to go up and down, up and down, in between. It's going to go down to $2,000, then they go up to $20,000, then they go down to $3,000, then they go up. Don't ignore everything in the middle. Focus on point number one, was I above and this off the minimum amount? Point number two, was I above and this off the minimum amount? If I was, I need to pay it. So look at your bank, this is what I do. You look at your bank statement, that's the easiest one. Right? First Ramadan, if you go by Ramadan, or January 1st, January 1st. You had the Nisab, the minimum, January 1st. Then I come January 1st, 2024. Right? I had the same 6,000, then my, my zakah, which is actually a little bit less, because it depends how much is the gram of the, I just looked it up, that's what I was doing, it's actually 5,440 as of today, because gold goes up and down. Then 6,000, 2.5%. Well, you had 24,000, now it's 24,000. You had 5,000, then you have no zakah, because you don't have the minimum, that's it. Now, you talk about 401k and then no, this. I did. No, no, I addressed it entirely. And so what kind of investment is it? You know, price per ounce. It's 2013. But I looked at gram because it's a zakaz and gram. Yeah, yeah. But so, I so it's 85 grams. So yes. what did you get for the gram? 64, 72 per gram. So times 80. Uh, uh, 85. I just 64 point? I did 5440. What did you get? 64 <laughs> Okay, here you go. So you have per gram 64, 72 times 85. 5501. Yeah, so it's 5500. Uh, yeah, so the 8500. It really calculates ladies because it changes. You could be six. It depends on the. It's going to change all the things every day. Every day. How much right. is the gram? What kind of investment? Right, so were you here during the presentation? Okay, so oh. I talked about stocks, right? So remember we talked about Tesla shares? Did we include them or we didn't include them? We did. Same. Did you get the question? Yeah, so uh, in general. So basically, let's say you have $3,000 in cash in your account, and then you have $3,000 in stock. Do you have to pay the cap? Yes. And, uh, uh, and just a comment. Stay away from bonds. From what? Bonds. Oh, bonds. Yeah. yeah. Anything that gives you fixed interest, stay away from. And even stocks. Make sure, especially these days, don't invest in bonds. Bonds are haram. Yeah. Yes. Hundred percent. But because they're long. So stocks, you need to check the stocks. Stocks please. itself. So you need to basically download an app called Zoya Finance. Put the stock in there to determine whether it's halal or not. That's the short answer. So Zoya will help me. I'll make it even easier for you. Healthcare, tech, you have no issues. Okay. Then you have definitely haram, every, and then you have the one in between, doubtful. Stay with these. Okay. No, 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 no. Well, there's more than that. So, so even within healthcare and tech, what happens is there are companies that are having, loaning out too much money on interest. Or there are collecting too much money. Or they're getting too much loans on interest. So if their debt to equity ratio is going to be over 30%, you should not be owning that stock. Oh. This is the fact from AOC and from all the scholars trust in the world. So basically, you want to make sure that they do not have over 30% of their money in cash, of the income in cash that is being loaned out on interest. You want to make sure that their, their, their debt that they have is also not over 30%. And that's what Zoya will do. So it'll, it'll have three screens. This first screen is what Jeffa is talking about. You're going to stay away from tobacco companies, from casinos, from pornography, from gambling, from uh, alcohol, finance, from alcohol, from pork. You need to avoid all of them. That's screen number one. 
Screen number two is making sure that they are not taking on too much debt. Screen number three, you have to make sure that they're a company like, let's say, Apple. They make so much money, they have so much money in the bank, and they're collecting interest on that. So they're collecting way too much interest on their cash assets, and there's way too much interest in that state. You're not allowed to invest in that. So that's why. Zoya, yeah, yeah, Zoya Finance. Zoya Finance. So that was a great book to find high taxes over the years, but. I've heard this, this from different opinions from different people, so I'm not sure what it is, but we're not allowed to collect interest is what I'm saying. So like if I have let's say a checking account as an anchor, I'm not allowed to put interest in that check. To get a get, get, get a interest free check. Yes. Right. So that's the thing. There's a certain interest we're not allowed to put in, right? We're not certain in. Right, okay. If you're forced to, then it's, it's okay. different. You give it out to some of the I can explain it in more detail if you have time. So license terms, for example, that's completely the whole other issue. And completely. We'll, we'll, we'll leave that for another, another day. Another day. Yeah. I think we need to do something about that. We were doing for yeah. the young professionals. Uh, like yes. <laughs> I think I understand it's for the young professionals, but there's a lot of benefit we get. Uh, we want to ask them. We'll do it for older professionals. <laughs> or much younger professionals. Yeah. Coming soon. Uh, somebody. So the date, yeah, the date only changes if two reasons. Number one, if you go below zero, you reset your home, you reset your song. And if um, you don't have the song at the second point of time, then you you reset your you reset your song. Let me let me be fair. Oh, you ask. Anyone else is not asking for the phone? Hamza. Involuntarily break the back. Do you have to? Remember what we mentioned? You were here for the first meeting, right? Does unintentional voluntary break the back? No. It does not. Why would you have to make it up to never go from the first place? Because you would not accept money for both years. Like the intent was to start a business back and you have to make up the retirement. Voluntary or obligatory? Voluntarily, you stop having Yeah, you're talking about Ramadan taxes, right? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, Ramadan, if you involuntarily broke your back, remember we covered that? Does, it, does your back break? Okay, if you voluntarily broke your back, talk about the serious, serious penalty for that. So I, what, is the, what is the penalty? For that? I had it, remember the song? May Allah make it easy, Hamza. So the penalty for breaking the back is not higher if the person is allowed to have it, but perhaps it's more serious than the back of the wall. Yes. It's okay, just say it, we can hear you, inshallah. Oh, now, now we know why she came in, because she's very soft spoken. So, come, come on, where is the mic? Oh, you have it. Yes. Bismillah. It's okay. She doesn't want to sit. Go ahead. Tell she, she can sit if you want. So, with regards to having people like this, different religions, uh -huh. right? What do you think of them? I understand that a lot it says, like, the people who don't believe in, like, one God, why do other people believe? Meaning? Okay, so the question is not related to Ramadan, but it's a good question because it's it's something the youth, I wouldn't say struggle, but they are faced with. How do they look at the people who don't believe in Allah with them in school or they have different religion, right? I'll answer them probably if you want to comment too. You look at, this is how we need to look at everybody. We start from the following. Everyone is a creation of Allah. Everybody is a human being. Don't you ever put somebody down because I believe in Allah and they don't. They are all human beings, right? They all have certain rights because of their humanity, okay? We come to, as Muslims, we believe. They don't believe or they believe differently. What did Allah say? The very common 
verse we all read, Nakum dinukum waliya deen. I am not going to tell you. If you ask me, I'll tell you. If you ask me, what do you believe? I tell you what I believe. So what do you think of me believing in this? I said, I disagree. But I'm not going to put you down. Nakum dinukum waliya deen. Right? So don't put people down. Don't tell them you're going to Jahannam. And I really mean this for everybody. Nobody knows who's going to go where. Because it all depends how I'm going to die. But having said that nicely and beautifully, but you don't say, it's okay what you are doing. Do you agree with what I am doing? And I say, with all due respect, no, I don't. Because this, creation, this all has to have a creator. You, you see my point? So I'm not going to compromise me, but I'm not going to be harsh. I'm not going to be looking down at people. And I'm going to make dua for them. Especially if they are with you in the school. They are very nice human beings. I'm sure all of you have seen really nice people. And literally, the only thing missing is la ilaha illallah. Right? Keep making dua for them. And you never know. You may be the reason why they change. Inshallah. Okay. Any question? Alhamdulillah. Bismillah. Did you understand the question, everybody, and heard the answer? Does anyone know what best stuff? Anyone else? Yeah. Oh, like one. From the guy side, anyone know what best stuff? Even the guys. So few guys, and how many from the girl side? I'm just curious. How many women know what best stuff? There's actually more women than men about that. Well, the, the, you know, the, the, the yeah, ratio is more. The ratio is more. <laughs> okay. But why don't you explain it to everybody? The best stock. So basically, there are stocks that you get from your company. And it's, a stock is a proprietary asset of the company. And it's owned by the company. So if you work in a company, sometimes you join a company. Let's say you join Microsoft. Or you join a Tesla. They will give you stocks as part of your compensation. So we're going to give you this much money per year, and we're going to give you some stocks of your company as well. The long way to stay with us. So there are some stocks which are invested, which means that you've been working for this company for five years, and now the stocks that we promised you, since you stay five years with us, five years with us, you're guaranteed to get these stocks, and there they belong to you. If you leave the company in two years, then they say, well, we were going to give you the stocks, but our condition was you have to work for us for five years. If you say, oh, you know what? There's this other company, Apple, wants me to join it. They're going to pay you more money. So I'm going to leave after two years. You don't get to take your stocks with you. You can keep your money that they paid you, but you lose all your stocks if you leave early. So that means that they're unvested. And if they're unvested, then they're not really yours yet until the vesting time comes. Therefore, they're not considered for the cup because you don't own them. You kind of promise them, you conditionally promise them that you keep working. You don't know if you're going to quit your job or you're not going to quit your job. The cat is only paid on things which you have in your ownership. This money belongs to you. And those unvested stocks don't belong to you. That's why you don't pay them. Now who knows what vested stocks are? <laughs> Yeah. Don't the Christian fast? Yes, they do. But it's different than us. We're the only people who we abstain completely from food and drink in a certain time. But they also do abstain from certain kind of foods. They have, if you have, you know, Catholics usually do that. It's going to come very soon, actually. They do 40 days, and then they stay away. But they decide what they want to stay away from, which is really something... And, but they do also have fasting, and also Jews have fasting. But the way our fasting is special. Yeah, so the people practicing the fast were given fasting as well. And so the Jews fast actually longer than we, less than we do, but the fast is longer. So in the time of the the prophets that came from Bani Yisrael, many of them were given the Sharia fasting.
So opposite. Sunset to sunrise? Sunset to sunset. Twenty-four hours. But they don't know all months. But they don't know all months. I've never been in my They have different type of bread. Okay, anybody else? Alhamdulillah. Oh, I think there's a brother here. Yeah. You mean don't play the level for the self of Haram then, but you play the level where it's not like a spiritual or not even. Yeah, that's what I mean. Right? As long as. Does it take him away from the yeah. obligation? Yeah, as long as it doesn't take him away from it. He doesn't waste so much of your time. time. He's not doing his prayer. He's not doing his things. Yeah. Really detailed stuff on it. Uh, from the Amzai process. If you look at the two years ago, there was a, uh, a conference uh, called the Assembly of Muslim Jurists of America. It was a whole detailed explanation of the um, rules and limits of playing video games. Uh, so myself and Sheikh Omar Khan, did a video today for South Africa, there's like a whole conversation of stuff and explaining the limits of, of all that stuff. So you can read that if you're really interested in that video. Already, alhamdulillah. There's one more? Yes. Okay. So the question is that zakah used to be uh, on farmland 5% or 10%, depending on if it's being irrigated by rain natural irrigation or not. And in fact, there's even a 20% zakah. I, I, I ask this question to my students all the time. Which zakah has 20% to do on it? So zakah is not only 2.5%. There's even the 5%, there's the 10%, and there's the 20%. So he just mentioned the 5 and the 10. Who can tell me the 20%? <laughs> Anyone? 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 Anybody? No. Bury treasure. So if you find a treasure, you have to pay 20% of that immediately, as soon as it's found. Yeah. So anyways, um, no. The 5% and 10% uh, does not apply to standard people's income. And there's an argument that has been made. I think it's a very, very weak argument. But it's been made that on stock shares, Instead of being 2.5%, it should be 10% of the of the growth of the stock, analogous to naturally irrigated land. So I've written a paper about how this just doesn't make any sense from a simple perspective. And it's not an opinion that's really, uh, it became prominent for a lot of reasons, but it's, I don't really see strong, in almost, most scholars in the entire world, do not take this uh, this level. It's a very weak analogy. What does what does land that you own that is naturally irrigated by rain have to do with stocks and the amount of uh, excess income and growth that's coming on the property and stuff? So that's a really as it's called peanuts, not fun. It is an incorrect analogy of two different things. Fitra, no, Fitra, you can pay at the starting of the beginning of Ramadan. It's recommended to pay at least a few days early so that when you reach the floor. A lot of people, what they do is they come on the day of Eid and they put it in the box and they go, I got it right before Eid. But the purpose of paying the Fitra is so that this money goes to the people who are poor so they can benefit from the day of Eid. That box is not going to, that money is not going to be distributed to them until much later in the day. And the volunteers have to be working on the day of Eid to distribute it for you. So this is really not right. So you can distribute it at any time starting from the beginning of the day of the 
Yes. Does this lecture have a website where we can go to or a blog? Yeah, we have a program. And when you go on the ICMI website or if you go to the office, it's called the Community Assistance Program. There's two ways to do it. You can either just donate your account online and, and make sure you click the account, or you uh, go and give a check to the office and write in the memo account, or you put cash in the envelope and you write the account on it, and, and it will be processed as account. But what you don't want to do is don't just put money into the random donation form because it won't be processed correctly as account. You have to make sure it gets processed as account. And alhamdulillah, we have probably one of the best distribution programs for account in the country. It's really amazing. Zero percent overhead. All volunteers run it, and they do an amazing job. Very professional. They vet the people. They check what are their needs and everything like that. It doesn't just randomly go to people, and they really get them the food that they need and they give them the amount that they need. So it's really it deserves uh, to be spotlighted more than it really is. It's an amazing program. Okay. You know, reward all the people who are. Okay, we are here. Ready. So this is the, the question is about giving zakat or fitra or fidya or any type of charity overseas, but the charities that are required to do. When it comes to zakat and when it comes to uh, fitra and these type of things, they're normally supposed to be distributed in the place that they were earned. Because so you earn this money in America, it's supposed to be distributed in the locality of America. This is Hadith the Prophet where he sent his Quran with the Jabu to Yemen. And then he was explaining the principle of what to do when you collect zakat. He says, this money is taken from their alniya and it's redistributed to their fuqara. It's taken from the wealthy and it's redistributed to fuqara, to their poor people, meaning the same people in the same location. There's only two exceptions to this. Exception number one is if it's a family member. So remember I mentioned that prior to zakat should be given priority to your family member. With the exception of which two type of family members, Children and, and parents, right? Because that's giving it back to yourself. So family members, exception number one. Exception number two, you can give it to another locality if there's a greater need in that locality, right? So here's the challenge that we face. Is there a greater need in other places? So there's two ways of looking at this. Number one, people say, look at the poor people in America. They have like, you know, they have people who are homeless and they have phones. And they have smartphones and they have this and they have that and there's so many things that they have. Some people make the argument there's no real poor people in America. Look at the people in, in, in Gaza. Look at the people in Bangladesh. Look at the people in Kenya. The people have like no food to eat. They don't even, they live in a, they have nothing, right? They have like almost nothing. So the one argument is people in America are not really poor. We should give all of our zakat to people who are way more poverty stricken than all other parts of the world. And therefore, we fall in category number two. As an exception, we should redistribute all of our zakat over there, or most of our zakat over there. The, the problem with this argument is that there are legitimate people who are Need very it. poor yes. in America. And you can't sit there and say, well, you know, but they have some things and they have more and they have belongings and, you know, they can go to Social Security. And the reality is the amount of homeless people in the United States is extremely high. The amount of people are genuinely is extremely high. So that the living standards of America are higher than most places in the world. But when you're calculating somebody's definition of being poor, you take the living standard and the art and the custom and what people are used to it. What what classifies as poverty in America is very different than the Congo or you know some random place in the world. So you have to Factor that in, so it's very, it's very wrong to, for people to think that there are no poor people in America. There's no poor Muslims in America. I hear this argument from people. I think that's that's, that's a very weak argument. As for the flip side, are the people in more need, like in disaster situations, in emergency situations, where hey, we have a good reason to be sending it over? Yes, there is an argument, strong argument that can be made. It's the amount of wars, the amount of disaster situations. Yes, people are more in need in those particular emergency, war, disaster situations, refugees, and all of that. So I think there is an argument where you can send some of it, and there should, there should be an argument where you keep some of it and redistribute it here, 
because we are, everyone is responsible for their own region, for their own locality. So if the wealthy people of, I'm trying not to pick on any particular country, but let's say very wealthy Gulf, and I want to fill in the blank out here, <laughs> countries where there's a lot of wealthy people and there's a lot of poor people, if their wealth was redistributed, if all the Ferraris and Lamborghinis that are produced by only 50 of them and they sit in the garage and they don't even drive it, if all of those were redistributed to the poor people of that entire country, then guess what? There would be no poor people in that entire country. We wouldn't have to be sending any money from America over there. But people are not fulfilling their, their responsibility, they're not doing their job. So yeah, I think there's an argument that can be made. It, there's, there's, it's allowed to do it. It's always recommended to redistribute it first in your own locality, unless there's an emergency situation. And I think some should be redistributed and some should remain here. So how far do you go to check if somebody's sick at eligible or not legitimately? Um, you do your due diligence yeah. to the point that you So normally, you don't need to be suspicious of somebody. But if you see a sign where there's like a suspicion that, hey, what if this person's doing this? Or what if they're well off? Or what if they're going to buy drugs? Or what if they're going to do waste the money? Then you just try to remove that suspicion by asking a question or asking about them, whatever it is. So you want to basically have a balance. You don't want to investigate too much, you don't want to be spy into them, but you don't want to be foolish because there are people who misuse a And the more people misuse a the more people who really need it are affected. So you will take on some responsibility of checking. You can outsource that responsibility to an organization like CAP who can do a little bit more, and that's what they do, that's their job. So there's no clear-cut answer. Somewhere in the middle, if you suspect, you do a little bit more. If you don't suspect, they seem genuine, you don't need to answer. The general answer. You, you don't have money, Hamza, do you? <laughs> he's trying to get, he's making the Nia. In 10 years. <laughs> His father is telling him well. <laughs> I'm just teasing you, Hamza, you know that. Oh, so if you have less than the, uh, less than the amount of 6,000, but you want to start paying any of the pay early, yeah, you should. That's a great practice, and I'll tell you why it actually has a very good basis. So the amount of zakat is calculated either with gold or silver. So the, 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 the three ounces of gold, 85 grams or 88 grams, is calculated on the value of gold. But there's also a value of silver, 595 grams of silver. And what happened was they just took a quick little check, kind of the proper PTA bar. Because so much silver was discovered in the New World, the New America, and stuff like that, the value of silver dropped drastically relative to the value of gold. So now scholars say, hey, because there's such a massive difference between the value of gold and silver, which Nepal do we use? Do we use the gold one or do we use the silver one? So several scholars have said we could use the silver one because it's more beneficial to the poor. So if you have more than $400, you can still be paying zakat according to this other rule. The challenge with that is that that makes it very difficult for people who have like $2,000 and they're paying zakat and they're like barely surviving on their own. So the standard fatwa is that gold is a better measure and value. There's an article written by one of the Chancel on Fifth Academy that work uh, on why. But if you look at the other opinion, which is very prevalent, it would be great of you to pay your zakat, even if you're below that, as long as you're over 585 grams of silver to buy that. You know, I don't know. Just think about it. Especially in your circumstance. Your family's got your back. So you can, you'll be okay if you pay your zakat. Yeah, no, good question. So when I said parents and, and children, it also, the same thing goes up. Grandparents, great grandparents, children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, all the way up, all the way down. They're all in the We have just a few minutes before we need to make the 
as I before other questions. Or the last Alhamdulillah. Help us to benefit from the suffering of Allah and Allah to purify our wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave and teach us the knowledge and the understanding so that we can apply our duty in the best of ways. Amin. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. 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 So you don't regard Masajid Fisabilillah, you are from the